Well, it's my honor to be with uh, two of the great broadcasting legends uh, that we know in Bob Cole and Dick Irvin. And uh, we've already seen the, the top uh, 33 of the top 100 players revealed and wanted to get a little bit of sense of history and your memories of the players. Uh, you know, let's start with Jacques Plante. Um, He's not a legend yet. He's still working. <laughs> a living legend. How's yeah, that? A, right. a, a working living legend in Bob Cole. But, you know, Jacques Plante was someone who really revolutionized uh, hockey. You know, I first saw Jacques Plante when we moved to Montreal from Regina. I was going to McGill. My dad moved the family down. He was coaching the Canadians. And Jacques was playing senior hockey for the Royals, Montreal Royals. And I go to the, my first game to see Jacques Plante, and here's this goaltender who is running out to the corner of the rink, running up to the blue line, passing the puck, giving instructions to The goalies used to just stand there in the goal crease, you know? And I'm looking at this guy saying, what is this all about? <laughs> Never saw a guy act that. And he wore a toque, a toque that he knitted, and he always wore the toque, no mask in those days. So the Canadian's goalie gets injured, and they bring up Jacques Plante for the, the substitute one night, and my dad wouldn't let him wear the toque in the NHL. And the press went all over him. You, he's, Irvin's ruined his career before it even started. He's going to be shattered not having his toque on. Anyway, Plant goes out, no toque. They win the game 3-1. to one, And he said right after the game, he said, I'll never wear the toque again. And he never did. <laughs> um, what about Terry Sawchuk? I went through a couple of years, you know, I thought the best player in hockey was Terry Sawchuk. Why is that? Because he was so good. <laughs> I mean, one night they played in Montreal. And I've seen a lot of hockey games and forgotten a lot of hockey games, but I remember this one like it was yesterday. The Canadians outshot Detroit 48-12. to Detroit won the game 3-1. to You take that to the bank, David. Sawchuk was the best. I, I always believed that. He was a masterful, masterful goaltender. Pronovo talked about Sawchuk in practices, this Marcel Pronovo. And he said, you know, he'd get so mad at you if you scored on him in a practice. He really would be upset with you, and he'd whack you next time you came by there. So that was Terry Sawchuk, but he was a great goalie. Bob, uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Mr. Hockey. Gordy. Gordy Howe. Um, mm -hmm. I know you had a story you wanted to share about Gordy. I was not working in the National Hockey League yet, and uh, aspired to be some kind of an announcer in the league down the road somewhere, maybe, I hoped. And uh, I spoke to our executive producer at the time, Ralph Mellaby, and uh, I called him and I said, I'd love to do a game on tape so that I'd have an audition tape if I were to need one someday with National Hockey League players. Ralph said, sure, we've got an open spot uh, in the forum Wednesday night. Come on up, Detroit is in. Get your tape recorder and blah, blah, blah. And so I did. And I heard about Gordy Howe, how he could do this, could do that, could do something else. But during the tape, which I still have at home, here's Howe coming in on that left side. He changes hands and takes the shot, and he hit the crossbar, I think. It was <laughs> crazy. I don't think anybody else has ever done that. So Gordy was such a special, special, special person. You know, the thing, too, about you mentioned him, I think right away, of the rivalry. Montreal and Detroit were the two best teams. And you'd go to the game and you'd watch them come out for the warm-up and you were so happy to see the two number nines. You know, the Rocket was, was this different kind of a guy than Howe, certainly. But I've always had the theory that Maurice Richard wouldn't have made the Montreal Canadiens on, based on his hockey skills alone. He wasn't that good. It was his intensity. What did what Sawchuk say when, when Rocket retired? What do you remember most about Morris Richard? He said his eyes. Mm. You know? and Those eyes would go right through you uh, if they had yeah. to. Another Canadian great, uh, Jean Beliveau. Uh, you know, when you think of the Montreal Canadiens, maybe that is, you know, one of the two names that comes to mind as, as the greatest. You know, I, I've often said if they had, if you took every player who's ever played hockey and had a draft, and I had the number one pick, I would pick Beliveau. I'd pick Beliveau because of his leadership. It's so strange how you talk to the players who played with him through his heyday. And it's, Big John said this, Big John said that. We did this because of Big John wanted us to do it. It's amazing. He was so, so classy and such a leader. And I tell you, he won a couple of cups for them. I mean, I know that much. Dick says classy. Yeah, and that's Belleville. You have to say that if you're talking about John. We've highlighted a lot about the great goal scorers that have been announced in the 33 uh, top players. There's only five defensemen on the list. Um, when you think of Doug Harvey, uh, 
what comes to mind when you think about the legacy he's left? I saw Doug Harvey for the first time when I was in Montreal, and uh, he, he, as they talk about a, a player controlling the game today, I guess, Dick, you, you've seen Harvey, of course, oh, yeah. a lot more. That, that was his big deal, wasn't it? Controlling yeah. the game. Pace. Yeah. If it needed speeding up, he'd speed it up. If it needed slowing down, he'd slow it down. Things were going bad inside your blue line, he would take Settle over. Settle down. You know? So for our younger fans watching this, a Nick Lidstrom. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe even slower if he, you know, at, at times. You know, there's been, over the years, there's been a lot of people who picked the all-time all-star team, and it seems to me that every one I ever heard of had on defense Doug Harvey and Bobby Orr. And I can just see that combination now. Doug slows things down, gets a hold of the puck. He said, take the puck off the other guy's stick. So, oh, I don't know. And he'd say, here, Bobby, you give it to Orr. Go out. Where you go. Speed I'll, it up. I'll, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> take it up. I'll be here when you get back. You know, <laughs> you know, one name on that list, and it brought back a great memory for me, is Dave Keon. Mm. And uh, the Leafs and the Canadians in the 60s, when the Leafs were winning the cup under Punch and Black, played game seven of a semifinal series in Montreal. And the Leafs won three to one. I believe it was one, but three for sure. And Keon got all three goals. And I don't think Bob and Dave and all my time watching, I saw a player dominate a game the way Dave Keon did that night. I mean, here's, you're talking game seven and the other guy's rink, you know? So the game's over. The Leafs have won the series. Keon has, did it all. And they announced the three stars. The first star is Johnny Bauer, goalie of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Second star, Charlie Hodge, goalie of the Montreal Canadiens. Third star, Dave Keon. So after the game, I ran into Keon, and I congratulated him on the great game. He said, what does a guy have to do to get first star in this building? <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the overall collection of the 33 players named, and knowing there's going to be 67 added to this list, what words come to mind? Well, I think... Uh, I, re I remember when I went through the list, when you provided me with the list first, they all deserved to be there. That's my feeling. I, I couldn't see anybody that I said, and, you know, hey, we're fans, we have our opinions of who's good, who's not so good. But I looked at the names and I thought, you know, you can't fault uh, the basic premise of every one of those guys. Pretty well, uh, I had the same feeling. And I said, how are they ever going to pick? 100 players from the National Hockey League over these years. How can they do it? And they obviously got a great group together and uh, somehow they sifted through everything and agreed or disagreed and added and took away and so on. But when you look at the whole thing, wow, it's an awful lot of powerful hockey players. Any one of them could play for our team. I think so. Really? Yeah. That's what I feel. Yeah, it's an amazing collection. There will be 67 more added. Yeah. Um, it's going to be an exciting weekend, an all-star weekend. Honestly, um, I've been in this business for 20 years now uh, on, in some way, shape, or form. And this is a big highlight for me. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys both. This is uh, tremendous to be with two broadcasting icons like yourself. So thank you so much. Okay, David, Irvin. thank you. And Bob Cole, thank you. There we go. David. Yeah, it's always you. good working with you as well. So um, thank you, gentlemen.